Does milk thistle actually work? Does it actually cleanse your liver? Okay, researchers used to think that milk thistle had a powerful effect because it had antioxidant capabilities within the liver. Newer evidence suggests not the case. I'm not saying that milk thistle doesn't work. I'm saying the antioxidant route is actually kind of the opposite in a lot of ways. You see, milk thistle has a powerful mechanism of action. In fact, it's a very fascinating compound. When you look at the active ingredient of milk thistle and what it does, especially within some of these mice studies, it truly is remarkable. It's pretty darn interesting, and I'll explain how that works, but I have to make sure I translate it into how it works with humans too. You see, milk thistle has long been deemed sort of the liver cleanser, like something that you would take to help um, allow your liver enzymes to get down or to protect your liver. Well, as far as liver protection, I don't know if there's a lot of evidence there, but as far as being able to alter some of the biomarkers associated with an unhealthy liver, yeah, it could make some sense there. We'll break it all down. Hey, after this video, I do wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market. If you are changing your eating habits or you're trying something new, Thrive Market is absolutely the place to get your groceries. It's what I use. So if I'm ever doing paleo or if I'm fasting or if I'm doing keto or if I'm doing like vegan experiments, which I've done from time to time, I can literally sort by the kind of diet that I'm doing and get the best ranking foods within that given diet. And then it gets delivered right to my doorstep and it makes it super, super easy. And trust me, this is something I've been doing for years and they've been a big supporter of this channel for years and they are just awesome. So you can check out the link down below and you get some special access and a free gift as well when you sign up. So check them out. They're an online membership-based grocery store. It just, it just makes my life easy and it saves me a ton of time not even to go to the grocery store anymore. Anyway, down below in the description. So what happens is with milk thistle, it does a few things. First of all, it induces what is called endoplasmic reticulum stress. That sounds bad. Why would we want to induce stress? Well, what we want to do is we want to build a little bit of resiliency. And this is where the whole protective mechanism comes into play. If we allow the liver to build a little bit of resiliency, it's potentially stronger. But we have to kind of have a big caveat with that. If we're triggering or inducing endoplasmic reticulum stress, we don't necessarily want to do that at a time when we are stressing our liver. We would want to do it ahead of time. So although that's a powerful effect, I don't know if it's really relevant because that same argument could potentially apply, hypothetically speaking, with alcohol consumption, right? If mild alcohol consumption is a stressor, would that imply that mild alcohol consumption is actually good for the liver? I'm not making any claim. I'm posing a hypothesis here. It's kind of interesting. But the big piece that sort of debunks the whole like antioxidant route is that we found that the primary two drivers of milk thistle and what they really do within the liver is they induce gene expression that is associated with cellular stress. Okay, so they induce genes to form and express and actually have their effect. Expressing a gene means allowing that gene to actually come to fruition and do its job that induce cellular stress. So basically we're triggering the liver to be armed. So in some ways there is a protective mechanism, but the other side, which is probably even more powerful, is it induces gene expression of genes that promote the modulation of inflammation. This is huge. Okay, modulating hepatic inflammation allows the liver to do its job better and potentially get itself back to a more normal state. But again, when you start looking at the human studies, which we'll talk about in a minute, they kind of are inconclusive. But in mouse models, the mechanism of action is huge. Like in mouse models, huge changes in liver function. So why doesn't it necessarily apply to humans? It could be a dose related thing. We'll talk about it in just a second. The mouse models again have indicated there is again that change in endoplasmic reticulum stress, but then there's also an activation of AMPK. This is really interesting because AMPK is usually only activated where, when we are in like an energy deprived state, when we're exercising, when we're in a caloric deficit, when we're fasting, things like that. But it also drops mTOR. What this means is mTOR is associated with like uh, collagenase just not working or collagen forming basically. If we have collagen forming in the liver, that's not a good thing, okay? Collagen forming within the liver indicates that we are building fibrosis. We don't really want that. So if we have an elevation of AMBK and a downregulation of mTOR, it means that, wow, the liver is potentially going through autophagy where it is consuming decrepit components of itself and recycling. That is phenomenal and very good news. 
But then there's also a modulation of metabolites within the liver. So meaning it's changing sort of the mitochondrial effect of the liver and how the liver metabolizes. So the long and the short of it is using milk thistle over a longer term could be something that helps you out a lot. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it as a protective mechanism to protect you from doing something bad to your liver because in essence, you could actually overstress your liver. If you're inducing stress, it allows the liver to become resilient. But if you're inducing stress along with an additional stressor, it could be bad. Okay, so you want to be inducing the right kind of stress during a time of purity, when a time that you're not consuming a bunch of garbage, right? There was a study that was published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology that looked at, like it was a meta-analysis of 17 different studies, and they found that there was no significant alteration or change to liver enzymes or the liver at all in humans. However, the mechanism of action was very clear in mice. So what does that mean? More than likely, it is a dose thing. Now, I'm not saying that you go and you mega dose milk thistle, but you probably do need to mess around with a higher amount to truly get an effect. If you're taking a small amount just consistently, you're not getting a protective mechanism. In fact, you're only disarming your liver to an extent where you could make it more open to damage. Getting the liver to be resilient requires a little bit of stress to the liver, just like fasting does. Fasting, we stress our body out because we don't eat and it goes into starvation mode, so it puts stress in the liver and it gets stronger and more resilient. Milk thistle can do similar things, but it has to be in a very clear, defined time. So what I would recommend you do is take 60 days or so, every so often, and take all the nasty things out of your body. Cut out the alcohol, cut out the unnecessary things you don't need that could be harming your liver, and allow yourself to have a little bit of a profile to get your liver a little bit stronger. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you wanna hear more little random tips and tricks that are probably useless to you, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.